<laughs> I'm gonna try and be really quiet about this, but I am, <laughs> I'm actually on vacation right now in Florida, and it is very humid and hot, and it's actually thunderstorming outside. Probably can't see it though, but it's our last day and I'm waiting in the hotel lobby. We have a very long time before we have to head to the airport. We just had to check out super early. So we have a, a few hours to just vibe on the resort before we have to actually catch our plane. So I figured there is no more appropriate place to work on a piece called music from the Redneck Songbook than the literal self. So I'm gonna do that right now. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna do it. Just started pouring super hard. Had to make sure there's proof on camera. For those who don't know, this is just what the Seth is like. Yesterday, it was mostly sunny, very few clouds, 80 degrees outside. It was also like that maybe like an hour ago, and then it got really overcast about 20 minutes ago, started drizzling a little bit, and then out of nowhere it just started pouring. But it's still warm outside, so we'll actually talk about some of that when we get to the third movement. But right now we're, we're working on the second one, so let's get into it. So. Here's what I'm thinking. Since this second movement, it's a lot less dense than the first movement. The first movement is basically everyone playing the whole time. The second movement is in variation form, and it's pretty much one melody passed around throughout the ensemble the entire time. And a lot of the interest of this movement is created with instrumentation and how many different interesting timbre combinations you can come up with. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to look at the original instrumentation, the, oh, the original voicing of the melody. Just take my, my notebook go through the entire movement and plan out which instruments I want to play the melody when. And same for the accompaniment and any counter melodies that come up. Let's do it. So that time lapse was 35 minutes long, and in that time, the weather outside went from pouring rain to sunny and clear to now cloudy again in 35 minutes. What is going on down here? Uh, I got my coffee from the, the hotel bar over there, and I feel a lot more energetic and galvanized to work on this now. Instrumentation decisions are done for movement two. You know what? <laughs> it's been a month. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. It's been a month since the last time I filmed myself doing this. Um, I was in Florida. It was, what day was that? It was June 4th. It is now July 3rd. Life gets busy. June was crazy. Everyone stop yelling at me. But I'm still on it. 
I still want to finish movement two as quickly as possible. It is 4th of July week. I got nothing going on. I'm trying to hammer it out as much as I can. I don't know what I'm gonna do today, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, yeah. Anyway, here's my magic notebook, and in here is the work that I did figuring out uh, where, who's, who's gonna play what. We've got nine statements of the melody. First statement, it's very deep. Why am I... I don't, I don't know why I'm taking you on this tour, but here we are. I need footage. <laughs> the first statement, it's very deep. The accompaniment is very low pitched and the melody is very low pitched. So I just kind of kept that. The second statement, it's a repeat, but with high octaves added on top. So there's like a lot of space between the low melody and the, the high voices playing the same thing on the second statement. And then statement number three, we get a little bit more accompaniment, we add more stuff, and then we have uh, brass playing the melody in fifths, parallel fifths. Uh, the fourth statement, we pair everything back, we take, like, we get some more basic accompaniment, and that's when we get two creative choices, where we have seven measure phrases instead of eight measure phrases, starting to gain momentum. The phrases are over a little bit more quickly. And this is also where he goes crazy with the instrumentation. The fourth statement is oboe and euphonium playing the melody. The fifth statement is flute and tuba playing the melody. And the flute's playing really low, tuba's playing really high. I think that's cool. The sixth statement is my favorite one. A lot of decoration from the percussionists. And the timpani plays the melody. That's going to be fun. Then the seventh and eighth statements are the the big giant moments, I guess, where the whole ensemble's playing. There's as much stuff going on in your face as you can. It's really loud. So that's seven and eight. And then the ninth one is a repeat of the first one, basically. Instantly back to like super quiet and somber. And then that's the whole thing, pretty much. There's a tiny little tag at the end. Yeah. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what we got going on. I wrote down what was going on in the score, and then on the next page here, I wrote down what my changes are. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get through as much of this as I can. We'll see we'll see what happens. Let's do it. Uncomfortable silent time lapse time. <laughs> So, as it turns out, my sense of time is uh, not great, <laughs> but in a good way. Uh, I thought this was going to take me days. It still, it still is, but I thought it was going to take me like, like over a week to do this movement because it's very long in time. But here's the thing. There aren't a lot of notes it's just really slow. So it, even though it's longer than the first movement, there are not a whole lot of notes. There's a lot of repeated material and there's not a lot of moments where tons of people are playing at the same time. So what you just saw was almost two hours of work, an hour, 54 minutes and like 30 seconds or something. And in that time, I managed to do six of the nine sections of this movement. So if I really put my mind to it, uh, not tomorrow, because tomorrow's the 4th of July, but the day after, I can probably knock the rest of this movement out on that day. That's pretty exciting. So this, uh, this, this movement is going to be... It, ultimately a three-day project because I did do the one day of planning this movement when I was in Florida. One day of planning, one day knocking out the like exposition and development section. It's not a sonata, but you know what I mean. One day of working out the two big sections where everyone's playing at the same time, 
And then the last section, the last repeat of the motif is going to be exactly the same as the first time. And then there's like an extra two measure like punctuation mark at the end. <laughs> so this should be a pretty straightforward project. I'm listening to it. It is so good. Ooh, one thing that I did that was controversial that I just remembered. I I did make the executive decision to move this entire movement up a half step. The reason being, it's in the key of E flat minor originally. The tonic is E flat. The tonic is played by a lot of low instruments a lot of the time. I wanted the double basses to be able to play the tonic as low as possible. But the lowest note that they have is an E natural, a half step up. So I moved the whole thing up to be an E minor instead of E flat minor so that the double basses could play the tonic on an open E string and it could be really, really deep. Otherwise, it would have to be up a major seventh and it wouldn't quite have that like deep impact, you know? Controversial yet brave. Sorry, brass players that like to play in a lot of flat keys, but this one's for the strings. <laughs> so that's my that's my spiel. Oh, it'll also make it easier on the timpani when the timpani have to play the melody. <laughs> this piece is ridiculous. Oh my god. Anyway, that's it. More updates to come. I guess. Y'all, I'm going to be real with you right now. I am I don't know what's happening today with me, but for whatever reason, I'm just not feeling it. It is 7:30 p.m. I intended to start working on the 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 end of movement 2 at like 3. And it's been four and a half hours, and I haven't done anything. What is what is happening right now? It's just taking me forever to get into it. But I did some small miscellaneous tasks on my computer and around the house, and I, I think I have the ball rolling enough to start on it. But, oh my god. I just don't feel like doing anything today. I just want to lay face down on the floor and watch Heartstopper Season 1 again but we're going to get into it. Oh, and before I I literally oh my god. I'm probably going to cut all of it out. I have I have a lot of cuts in my videos, but even the the way that I'm talking right now, I'm just not feeling it. Like I'm thinking about what I want to say, then I start saying it, and then I back off, and then I, I say half a word, and then I start over again. It's just, I'm a mess right now. But anyway, the thing that I remember, uh, I didn't respond because I'm, again, feeling slow today. I will respond. But the composer himself, I emailed him, and I told him that I'd be interested in performing an orchestra version of this work. And he emailed back today, and he seems very excited about it. Let me, let me actually pull it up and tell you what it says. Oh, this will give you a great, actually great background, like where I'm coming at this from. So let me, let me just read my email, and then I'll read his email. And then we'll finish movement two, and everything will be fabulous. <laughs> First of all, this is an email thread that started on Sunday, January 28th, 2018, and I sent an email to the composer's website. I don't think he's the one that actually responded. Uh, this is when I got the scores. I said, hello, I was looking at your website on the page for Scott Allister's Music from the Redneck Songbook 2. And I was instructed to send an email to this address for a PDF score. Will the PDF incur any sort of purchase fee? Thanks, Justin. I was I used so many big words because I wanted to I wanted to seem cool. I wanted to seem smart. But anyway, someone named Jonathan 
just said, no fee, I attached the score, thanks. And it's the it's five files, the title page and movements one, two, three, four. He responded literally the next day, like 27 hours later, Monday, January 29th, 2018. And then five years later, on June 30th, I said this in the same email thread. I cc'd the composer's work email from uh, from the university that he teaches at. So I said, hello there. In 2018, when I was in high school, I saw the California State University Northridge CSUN Wind Ensemble play the music, oh, sorry, well, play music from the Redneck Songbook 2. I'm probably going to keep that one in just to show you exactly the type of, like, mouth typos that I'm making right now. I loved the piece so much that I emailed you looking to buy the score to study for fun, which was so graciously sent to me for free. Since then, I completed a Bachelor of Music program, joined a community orchestra, achieved a principal position, and now I would love to be able to perform this piece myself. What sort? This is the main purpose of me sending this email, actually. What sorts of fees or legal processes would be involved for me to arrange the work for orchestra and perform it live at a concert where the orchestra would receive donations? I wanted to know, like, the, the legal stuff, if he needed to receive any royalties or something, copyright issues. I'm, I, I'm still f- very unfamiliar with that side of the music business. Shoot me, whatever. Let me know if this is feasible, and thank you for the wonderful music you've created. And that was a genuine compliment, because this is probably my single favorite piece of music. And then he responded today, on July 5th, like two and a half hours ago, and he said, Hi Justin, thanks so much for your email and kind words. Wow, an orchestra version would be cool. Which orchestra are you in? Congrats as well. That would be a lot of work on your part. Oh yeah. (laughs) Have you done much arranging slash composing? Maybe I can help orchestrate if I can find the original files. Thanks for asking and let's think some more about it. Take care, Scott. I love this. I'm very excited about this actually. I'm I'm probably still my um my battery is a little bit too drained right now to respond. Socializing and communicating with people takes a lot of energy out of me. <laughs> so I'm probably going to respond tomorrow when I've had the chance to sleep a little bit longer. But yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm so happy that he's on board. Anyway, let's do stuff. I'm I'm not going to make you sit through another time lapse, but that's an update. And I'll see you when it's done. Bye. It's 9.16 now. Uh, I finished movement two. <laughs> I don't want to talk for too much longer, but it sounds epic. I just listened to it. I'm very happy with it. Very excited about this project again. So happy that the composer is happy that I'm doing this. So if you're watching, Scott, hi. <laughs> and thank you for letting me do this. This is super exciting. I'm going to go eat dinner. I feel very satisfied with today now. I'm glad I I'm glad I pushed through the fatigue. I'm really tired now, but I at least feel satisfied that I did something. So that's probably going to be the end of this whole video. Whole long video. So, if you watched the whole thing, then thank you for doing that. More to come. Bye-bye.